Normally we don't like to talk about YouTube drama, but there's something going on right now that transcends that. As you may know, H3H3 is being sued by another YouTuber because they used his work in one of their videos. Now to everyone on this platform, that seems totally normal because the expectation is when you put something on YouTube, you are putting it before a public forum. And if other people want to comment on that material, they have the right to do so. So long as they add something and they keep it creative and they generally give you credit. Now, that's a lot different than the way that things used to be. And the crux of the issue here is that there's a problem with copyright law and the way that it was written and originally intended. Not only as a member of Corridor Digital, but as a lawyer in the state of California, I think it's super important that we take a moment to examine not only what's before H3H3 here, but what it means for the rest of the platform and for the future of copyright law. There's a lot of assumptions about what fair use is, so let's clarify what it is and what it's not. The first thing to remember is that fair use is not a right, it's a defense. In order to argue an affirmative defense, you must present it to a fact finder, i.e. a judge or jury before the court and only under the facts of your particular case. Therefore, you must go through a lengthy and costly court process in order to assert this defense. And that's exactly why the H3H3 case is taking so long and costing so much money. When they have their day in court, the judge will look to four factors to determine whether or not the fair use defense applies. Number one, he will look to the purpose and character of the use. Now this one is very important. The judge will be looking to see if whether or not when H3H3 took the video from the other YouTuber and put it in their own, they added something to that YouTuber's video. In this particular case, they put three minutes of another YouTuber's video in between 11 minutes of their own creative commentary, but they didn't actually touch or affect the other YouTuber's work. So it ultimately comes down to the judge or jury to decide whether or not placing someone else's video in between moments of constructive, creative, comedic commentary is in and of itself transformative, or if it's not because they just took it and placed it and then added stuff of their own separately. If H3H3 wins, it will set a precedent that says their style of video creating does fall under the first factor of fair use. The second factor that the judge will look at is the nature of the copyrighted work itself and whether or not that work is strongly copyrightable. Is it original? Is it unique? The answer is yes. And this factor actually does fall in that other YouTuber's favor. Number three, the judge will look to the amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole. Here, H3H3 used the entire video, which traditionally is a bad thing, but just like in the music industry, where the courts had to come up with a guideline so that musicians could cover other musicians' songs, the same thing is happening here, but the law hasn't caught up yet. People online consider it entirely fair and normal to take someone else's video and add something to it. You look at the way that Mike Diva's done dubstep remixes, you look at the way that H3H3's done comedic commentary on other people's videos, this, is, this goes on across the board and it's considered acceptable by the community. But the law hasn't caught up yet and this is exactly where the problem lies. At number four, the court will consider the effect of the new use on the market of the original copyrighted work. Does the new use add value or take away value from the original copyright? In this case, I think H3H3's use definitely adds value to the original YouTuber's video because it gets him more views, it gets his name out there, and it overall adds value to his channel across the platform. As you can see, this case ultimately comes down to two things. Whether or not the court will consider H3H3's use to be transformative, and whether or not they will consider the type of use that's being made across the digital community to be fair, much in the same way that they had to recognize musicians making covers of other people's songs. The problem is, they haven't quite caught up with this yet. And if H3H3 is able to win this case on this fair use defense, it will set precedent for the rest of the digital space and the rest of our community. And this is what makes this case super, super important. For all of you who supported H3H3 in this fight, or even just add to the conversation that's happening right now, thank you. It's very important. It's gonna mean a lot for, it's gonna mean the world. It's guys, it means the world to us. It's gonna mean a lot, not just for Ethan and Hilla, but for the world. Did you understand all that?
it's a hard day and I'm and it's what we're thinking about all the time. Hopefully I'll find out this month if I'll be in financial ruin for the rest of my life or not. $54,000. It's like we're fucked no matter what happens. 